If you're a man over 40 and you want a quality life with strength and durability so you can enjoy your family and business for years to come, this video is for you. I'm gonna show you three tested, tried, and effective training strategies that men over 40 can implement in their daily lives. Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Lebestag here. If you're a man over 40, you have more demands and more responsibilities in life. If you want to meet these demands, you have to have your physical qualities at peak level. The kettlebell offers itself well because it gives you so much bang for your buck in a very short amount of time. Matter of fact, even if you're over 50 or over 60, the kettlebell is the perfect tool for you Two, we get so much feedback on a daily basis from people from all around the world, from different walks of life, yet in that same demographic that says, the kettlebell has saved my life. Now I've had my ups and downs with the kettlebell. I had to learn the hard way. The kettlebell training requires skill, precision, and technique. But thankfully, after my sensei, Steve Carter, who, by the way, is a legend in the kettlebell world, certified Angie and me in the year 2019, I finally found out what kettlebell training is all about. His teachings are the building blocks of what I do today. And now I'm able to stand in front of you as a kettlebell expert to a certain extent to teach you these three powerful strategies that are going to help you to take control of your fitness and your health. Now let's start with strategy number one. I'm going to show you six exercises that you can do throughout the whole year that give you a lot of return on investment. Now before we get started, you might come from the traditional gym background like I have. And the first thing that maybe pops into your mind is what kind of muscle groups do each exercises train? Now you have to ditch this gym head or this meat head mentality. With kettlebell training, you train almost your full body with every exercise. Yes, of course, there might be a focus rather on the lower body or rather on the upper body. But the kettlebell is a unifying tool that requires that your body works in harmony. So therefore, all muscles have to work together. It's, by the way, one of the reasons why many of our clients rarely experience delayed onset muscle soreness after the third or fourth workout. So now let's get started with the deadlift. Shoulder with stands over the kettlebell. I hinge. This means I'm pushing my hips back into an imaginary wall that's behind me. I keep my spine straight. I don't bend it. I straighten my arm. I bend the knees. I grab the weight. Stand up. Fully extend the hips at the top and exhale and back down. Some great variations are the single hand deadlift. The hang deadlift. or the hand-to-hand -hand deadlift. Now let's check out exercise number two, the double-handed press. As soon as you pick up a kettlebell for the first time, you have to understand that you will be pressing a lot. And for many people, this right here is their weakness, and therefore they rarely train it. But with kettlebells, you will become stronger in your weakest spots. Let's check out the double-handed press. I swing the bell between my legs, and then I insert both of my thumbs inside the window of the kettlebell. We call, it just, we call this a thumb grip. One, two, three. Now I grab the kettlebell like this. The handle makes contact with my chest. Elbows close to the body. Now I press the weight overhead. Now here's a pro tip. As you can see, I keep my upper body fairly relaxed because I want to keep the weight close to my center of mass. Now as soon as I finish in the top fixation, I don't stay here, but I bring my upper body back in alignment in my center of mass so that the kettlebell now sits approximately alongside the middle of my head. Now when I bring it back down, I shift my upper body backwards so that I can bring the kettlebell back down and keep it inside that center of mass. So with the press, it's not just up and down, but also back and forth. A great variation that I also like to use is the assisted press. So I clean the weight up, I swing it up, and then I bring my palm under the bell 
and with my right hand or then my left hand respectively if I'm switching sides, I grab it by the handle. And now from this position, I press the weight overhead. And the same goes with my upper body, shifting outside and inside my center of mass. Exercise number three is the goblet squat. And from a biomechanical standpoint, this is a front squat. So this means we have to make sure that the hip comes as close to the calf as possible and that the upper body stays as upright as possible. So this is what it looks like. I bring the kettlebell up in that sandwich grip, stand a little bit wider than shoulder width stance. I push my feet to the left and to the right respectively, outwards. Now I hinge a little bit, push the knees out, squat down in the bottom position, and I come back up. Now if you are experiencing some pain in your knees, it might be that you're not suitable for this type of squat yet. So here's an exercise, a great variation that you can do, we call it the back squat. Watch what this looks like. I'm pushing the hips back, extending my arms in front of me, and now I'll bend the knees. Stop, and I come back up. Now these next two exercises deserve a proper mention. These are so-called ballistics, the swing and the clean and press. And this is the USP of kettlebell training because the kettlebell allows you to work with a weight for a continuous amount of time. And this builds so-called special or hybrid endurance, a unique selling point that only kettlebell training can provide. And there are some unique benefits attached to it. A ballistic exercise like the swing melts together different and individual phases, which we're gonna look at before we do the exercise. So here's how we start. Shoulder with stance, the kettlebell's half a meter in front of me. So now, I grab the kettlebell and I swing it between my legs to start with momentum to not waste the first rep. As soon as I have contact with my body, I pull my arm close to my body to make sure I have this arm-body connection. We call this ABC. From this position, I hip thrust the weight upwards, but I want to keep my arm glued to my body until this hip extension is, boom, finished. Now the kettlebell doesn't fly away from me forward, but it flies upwards in a vertical position. As soon as the kettlebell reaches its apex, where it's almost a float without you having to do anything, you're switching hands. And now you let the kettlebell drop, which means gravity does its thing, until your arm reconnects with your body. Boom, as soon as you feel this reconnection, you really drill your arm into your body, and then you hinge, and your free arm or your ghost hand is simulating what your leading arm is doing. And then we are in the backswing, and here we go again. Watch. Exercise number five is the one exercise that I would do if you would hold a gun to my head saying, Gregory, you're only allowed to do one exercise for the rest of your life. It would be the clean and press. There are seven basic human movement patterns that you have to know when you train your program. This is push, pull, hinge, squat, carry, rotation, and anti-rotation. The clean and press involves all of them except for the squat. And we can even add a squat to involve all seven basic human movement patterns in one exercise. This is what the clean and press looks like. If we would add the squat, it would look like this. Now we're going to talk about programming in a second, but here's one major point that I wanna make. You can set the timer for 10 minutes. Use your iPhone, drop it on the floor, set it for 10 minutes, and now you do a clean and press alternating, one rep with the right side, one rep with the left, so on and so forth for 10 minutes straight, and you have a great and powerful workout. Now I wanna dedicate a little bit more time to the clean because it's technically very advanced. When you swing the kettlebell up from the backswing position up onto the rack position, this is where the rack is, the kettlebell is right here, you have to insert your full wrist inside the window of the kettlebell. This is what it looks like. 
Now in order to do this, you want to watch that when you swing the kettlebell up, that the kettlebell is always facing downwards and you are now inserting your hand from this bottom position. Vroom. So as the kettlebell points downwards, the handle points towards you from this position. You are inserting your hand and racking the weight. What you don't want to do is letting the kettlebell face upwards. If you do it, it crashes. Watch. Once we have this solid position where I'm inserting my full hand inside the window of the kettlebell, now I can curl my fingers into a fist. I don't have to grab it. It's now attached to my frame or my skeleton, which is called biomechanical efficiency. From this position, I press the weight up in a straight line. And we have learned that I can shift my body weight a little bit backwards, especially my upper body, press it. And once it's in the top fixation, boom, I bring my upper body back inside the alignment and back down. The final exercise is the farmer's walk, a powerful low-tech exercise that doesn't require a lot of thinking and is a great tool against back pain. Since we have only one kettlebell, and I'm assuming that maybe you only have one kettlebell too, it's now called a suitcase walk. This is how it works. And go. We're walking and we're good to go. Low-tech exercise doesn't require a lot of skill, but still gives you a lot of bang for your buck. Switching sides. And now because the kettlebell wants to pull me down, my rotational muscles, so to speak, have to work. With strategy number two, we're now going to talk about programming. Now step one showed us what we have to do. With step two, we're now learning how to do it. How to implement these six exercises that I've just shown you into a powerful workout that gives you a lot of return on investment. Here's the protocol that we're going to use. In the first part of the workout, we want to focus on muscle and strength and we're going to use the AMSEP method. In the second part of the workout, we're going to focus on fat burning and hybrid endurance, where we use a circuit method. We use this type of training strategy in our gym on a daily basis with great results. So let's check out the exercises that we have already done before. We have the deadlift, the double-handed press, and the goblet squat. The first three exercises, they belong in the muscle and strength part of the workout. So we do 10 reps per exercise, unbroken. This means with as little as rest as possible in between the exercises. Once we have done all three exercises, we have one set. We set the timer for six minutes, which is one round, and we do as many sets as possible, and we do two rounds total. In the second part of the workout, we're going to use the circuit method. We have the hand-to-hand -hand swing, the clean and press, and the suitcase walk. We do all three exercises for two minutes each, again unbroken with as little as rest as possible in between. This equals six minutes of work, which is one round, and we're going to do two rounds. I guarantee you, if you use this workout as your base, you're going to get massive and powerful results. With strategy number three, we're gonna quickly talk about frequency, programming, and accountability. Frequency is very easy to do. For a kickstart, you might wanna do two to three workouts per week to get great results as fast as possible. And then, once you achieve your autopilot, which may be after two to three months, it's enough to do one workout per week for the rest of the year. Even if you only do one workout per week starting today, for the next year, you have 52 workouts in the bank. When it comes to programming, you can use these six exercises, its variations, or even some more powerful, most bang for your buck kettlebell exercises to mix and match your workout strategy to make sure it doesn't get boring. And the final point is accountability. Join a kettlebell group, join a membership, maybe ask somebody from your class, from your coworkers, or your family who wants to train with you. Look for a workout buddy, a coach who can support you along the way. There's two rules to success. Number one is to start doing, this is what you're doing right now because you're watching this video. And number two is to keep going. And most people don't keep going because they lose motivation and enthusiasm. So make sure you're part of a group a part of a accountability coaching system that requires you to show up on time and to do the work. As a bonus, if you are a man getting started with kettlebell training, grab yourself a 12 kg competition Superflow hollow core kettlebell. We sell these kettlebells, I believe it's the Rolls Royce of kettlebell training, 
and you wanna invest a little bit of money into these things because they are worth it. Don't buy crappy kettlebells because if you work with a kettlebell that's not good, that doesn't have the proper handle or the proper size or the proper diameter, you will never be able to develop proper technique and it won't be a lot of fun. If you have the chance, grab two 12s so you can do double exercises which are a lot of fun and give you different benefits and then once you are ready, jump up to the 16 which is the yellow one. We call it Lemon. It's a powerful kettlebell that is good for advanced beginners. It's not as heavy but it still gives you a good challenge. Here's the next thing that you have to do, like the video, consider subscribing, share with a friend and if you made it this far, consider joining the House of Stock and become a Labor Stock member. Hundreds of kettlebell workouts, weekly workout challenges, skill courses, Facebook group, everything you've dreamed of that a proper kettlebell membership should entail. I call it the Netflix of kettlebells. And you know what's powerful? You can get started for only $1. So click the link right now.